Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Rampant Design Tools, and I'm back again with another tutorial. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about using one of my favorite products inside of the Rampant Design Tools product line, Natural Lens Flares, inside of DaVinci's Resolve. And as you can see in front of you, we have a shot of the Griffith Observatory in Los Angeles. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this great looking shot and we're going to take it to the next level by doing some color correction to it and using a great element from that package of natural lens flares to take this shot to the next level. Now, to follow along in this lesson, you're going to need a couple of important components. The first thing you're going to need is a copy of DaVinci Resolve, but fear not, you can head on over to the Blackmagic Design website and download DaVinci Resolve for free to follow along with this lesson. Now you are going to need some elements to work with. Now, you might not necessarily be working with the exact same natural lens flares that I'm working with, but I do encourage you to head on over to 4kfree.com. Why 4kfree.com, you ask? Well, once you head on over and you enter your name and your email address, you're going to be signed up for the Rampant Design Tools newsletter. Why is the newsletter great? Well, every week Rampant Design Tools has fabulous sales on a lot of different products across their product line, and you'll be the first one to know it by being signed up to the newsletter. You'll also be signed up to be the first to know when Rampant Design Tools will be posting new tutorials. What it's also going to give you access to, once you click here to download, is you'll be directed to the download section where you can get in and download a whole bunch of fantastic free elements. You'll see here's the rampant film and light category, and you'll see you can get in and download everything from film burns to studio flares to bokeh to impact lights, even film clutter and film effects animated mats. Look, we're still going rampant design tools transitions as well, and even motion graphic elements as well as distortion and grunge and visual effects elements. You'll see just an absolute ton of elements in here. Oh, and by the way, I did mention that they are 4K and they are free, didn't I? You can get in and download these elements, some of which we can use, much like studio flares, to follow along with this lesson. Now, you won't get the exact same end look, but you'll get something that looks pretty darn close. Okay, so let's hide out of Chrome and what we're going to do now is we're going to Command or Alt and Tab into DaVinci Resolve. All right, now that we're in Resolve, we are going to need some elements to work with. Now I'm going to bring in that clip of the Griffith Observatory as well as a whole bunch of different lens flares because I want to show you how you can source elements right from within Resolve. What we're going to do, let's navigate to File, Import Media. And I'm going to head to my external media drive, into my footage, into my rampant folder here. There we go. And here are all of my natural flare elements. I'm going to say open to bring them all into the media pool. Now, for the sake of keeping everything nice and organized, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to add a new bin. We're going to call this natural flare elements. Okay. And I'm going to take all these natural flare elements, just drop them into that bin. And let's bring in our clip of the observatory that we're going to work with here and I'm going to come to footage I'm going to come to art beats and I'm going to select that shot which is right here and I do want to give a shout out and a big thank you to art beats for the use of this fantastic looking shot in this lesson you can always check them out at artbeats.com okay now just for the sake of keeping everything nice and organized we'll just add another bin here I'm going to call this art beats element Okay, and let's talk about finding just the right rampant design tools elements to work with this particular shot of the observatory. Now working in Resolve, we have a great built-in feature of Resolve that makes it quite easy to find the element that we're working with. But in a lot of cases, you're not going to want to sit in Resolve or inside of your NLE for that matter to find just the right element. So what do you do? Well, you'll notice that when you make your purchase of Rampant Design Tools elements, in a lot of cases, what you're actually going to get is a PDF file that's going to give you a still image of all of the different elements. Now, keep in mind, we could be talking about, you know, over 100 different elements per product package. There must be an easier way to track down these elements. Well, there is. Rampant Design Tools has the Rampant Previewer app that you can download onto all iOS devices and you're going to be able to use it via Wi-Fi to get in and search across their entire product line to track down the exact element that you're going to want to use. This is a great way for you, again, not to be sitting in front of your NLE or in this case in front of DaVinci Resolve. You could sit on your couch, you could sit in your office, you could sit on the beach if you wanted to 
finding the right element for your project. Okay, but let's talk about specifically in Resolve since we're already here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come into my Natural Flare Elements folder. Now you'll see that I get thumbnails of all the different elements. Now if your thumbnails aren't that large, don't worry, you can enlarge them right over here via the slide bar. Okay, now all I have to do is simply hover over any of the elements and I can skim through and get a preview of exactly what these elements look like when they're moving. And at any time, if I want to see a, a larger version of it, I could simply double click on it and you'll see there it is there. I can drag through, or of course we can hit play to play it through. You'll see in a lot of cases, it's better to skim through because you'll see these elements are very subtle and sometimes you want to see exactly what they're going to be doing across the entire length of the shot. Now, I think the element that I've narrowed this down to is number 22 of my natural lens flares. So let's now get in, let's create this timeline. What I'm going to do is head on over to the edit module. Let's come back up here to our art beats element. Let's take our shot here. I'm going to drag it down here into our timeline. There we go. Now you'll notice that in the intro, I had a bit of a sped up part at the start of the shot. We had a speed up right to about here and then it cut to regular speed. And this is an effect that you see all the time in shows like The Apprentice or Hell's Kitchen, things like that. We're going to get to that at the very end. I'm going to show you how we're going to add that element in to finish things off. Okay, let's now head back to our natural flare elements bin. I'm going to take element number 22. I'm just going to take the element. And I'm going to drag it down to my timeline. Now you'll notice that if I try to take it and drag it to where video layer 2 should be and let it go, nothing happens. What I like to do is to take this element, drag it onto V1, and then bring it up to V2 to create that video track number 2. I'm just going to take the element, we're just going to crop it off at the end here. The element is fairly consistent throughout the duration. So I'm happy with it the way that it is. Now, before we get in and actually do any of the uh, transfer modes and then getting in and doing the speed change, I want to do a little bit of a color correction to the background. Now before we do that, I need to disable video layer 2 because I don't want to see anything of what's going on with the natural flare until I'm ready to add it. I'm just going to disable that layer and what I'm going to do is head to the color module. Now inside of the color module, this looks pretty daunting if you're new to Resolve. Now believe it or not, we're not going to do anything complex as far as getting in and doing this crazy color correction because what we want to do is just ever so slight and ever so subtle. Remember, what we're trying to mimic is the sun on the horizon, just getting ready to go down when we have that sort of orangey red light that's sort of painting everything that basically the sun is touching. And that's what we're going to recreate right here. Now, we're not going to do it with the primary bars. What I'm going to do is switch back to my color wheels. Now, because it's basically the brightest parts of the shot that we want to impact with this color change, we're only going to adjust the gain. Now, again, if you're new to color correction, keep in mind, lift, gamma, and gain represent shadows mid-tones and highlights. So the highlights are what we want to adjust. I'm just going to grab the center of the color wheel. We're just going to drag over towards, and I, I think that's actually not too bad where I drag to. We're going to drag over towards the orange and red part of the color wheel, and right there is looking pretty darn good. That's looking like the sunset where we've got it right there. I'm just going to let go. Once we have our color correction looking the way that I want, I'm going to come back to the edit module and we're going to come, we're going to turn video layer 2 back on and we're now ready to get in and to use a transfer mode on this layer. Now one thing you're going to love about Resolve, much like in Premiere and even Final Cut Pro, is that Premiere has some clip based parameters you can get in and adjust and one of them is the composite mode. So with the clip selected, I'm going to navigate over here to the inspector and you'll see the very first option is the composite mode. Composite mode right now set to normal, I'm going to change that to an additive transfer mode. Now what's important to keep in mind about these elements is that because they are 4K, they are in a 2.40 to 1 aspect ratio which is slightly different from the 16 by 9 aspect ratio of the footage that we're working with right now. So we do need to make an adjustment to our lens flare, our natural flare. I'm going to come back to the color module. We're going to come to sizing. We're just going to zoom in just a little bit on the flare. And you'll also notice here that the way that the flare is set up, that we're getting a little bit of a bright spot over here, making it appear as though the sun is on this side of the screen on the right. So let's take this flare and flop it over to where the sun should be coming from. Now, a couple ways that we can do this. I can get in and rotate this like such, but then we're basically taking the flare and flipping it upside down, which I don't want to do. I'd rather just do a simple flip, just like that. That's looking a little bit more natural to me. The sun should be over here. This side of the building is a bit brighter. Flare's happening on the right side of the screen. 
we're looking pretty darn good. Let's just come back to the beginning, hit play, and that's looking pretty realistic. Almost like it was shot like that, which is the exact goal that we're trying to achieve. Okay? We're almost there. Now I want to put in that speed change that I showed you in the intro. And how are we going to do that? Well, we could do it to each layer individually and then merge the two of them together. But I'd rather do this as a compound clip. What I'm going to do is right click on both layers and create a new compound clip. We can call the compound clip whatever we want. I'm going to call this final natural flare. Okay. And we're going to say create. Now, once we have it created, what we need to do is to get our speed parameters up. I'm going to do that by pressing Command or Control and R on the keyboard with the clip selected. There we go. Once we have our speed change parameter set to go, you'll see that we have these little arrows that are pointing to the right. They're all consistently spaced apart, meaning that this clip is at 100% speed. And we're going to want to do a bit of a speed change from a certain point to another point and then head back into that 100% speed. What I'm going to do is drop this down, and I think I'm pretty happy with where we are here. I want to get the observatory almost straight on, right about there. And right about there, what we're going to do is add a speed point. Okay. Now, once we've added the speed point, all we're going to do, and you'll notice that as we do this, this is one thing I love about Resolve, and especially working with speed changes, is that it's dynamic. As I'm adjusting the speed of the clip before the speed point that we added in here, the rest of the clip is dynamically not having the speed adjusted, but its out point is being pulled back to compensate for the speed change we're making off the top. And I want to make this pretty quick off the top. You'll see right now we're at about, about a second and 20 frames. You'll see that's looking pretty good right about there. Now, if we wanted to do it even faster, it'd almost make it like a transition. Just bring it right back. We'll have it spin around super fast and then go into real time. So you can now see, not only have we gotten in, done a basic color correction to make what looks sort of like a mid-afternoon shot into what looks like an evening shot when the sun's down at the horizon, we've also gotten in and added this ramp and design tools element in and added it in in a very subtle way so it doesn't look like we've added anything. It makes it look like this flare was there the entire time. Then we got in and added the speed adjustment to give this a little bit of a stylistic look. Now, one thing that I do want to point out before I wrap things up is that with Rampant Design Tools elements, keep in mind that they are like the icing on your cake. They're what you're going to add to your timelines to really take shots to the next level. I could have done a basic color correction to this to change it to make it look like the evening, but the lens flare just takes this shot, makes it look that much more realistic, and takes your production to the next level. All right, now don't forget, if you want some great free 4K elements, Head on over and check them out at 4kfree.com. And to check out the entire Rampant Design Tools product line, you can head on over and check them out at rampantdesigntools.com. <laughs>